Welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be Have Gun, Will Travel, original air dates, November 30th, 1958. And in this episode, Paladin visits Bluebell. He loses his money, gun, and horse, but wins the woman. Was that a fair exchange? Title of this episode is Road to Wickenburg. Hope you enjoy, and again, thanks for listening. four of you gentlemen, and I have only one bullet left in my derringer, so my choice is very simple. I'll kill the first man who speaks. Have Gun, Will Travel. Starring Mr. John Daner as Paladin. San Francisco, 1875, the Carlton Hotel, headquarters of the man called Paladin. Mr. Paladin, Mr. Paladin. Over here, hey boy. Oh, yes, sir. A bank almost closed. Uh, Here the money. Oh, one thousand dollars. Good, good. Thank you, hey boy. Now bring the saddlebag along, will you? Well, you go? I go. You just come back from going. I go again. Oh, I see. Uh, I see. A lovely lady with long blonde hair who lives in sweet is... She's just a bit too purposeful for my taste at the moment. <laughs> uh, in short, hey boy, she is chasing me. Oh, very, very persuasive lady, Mr. Paladin. And less apt to persuade me to marry her if I'm not around. Give me the bag. Oh, yes. Ah, uh, absence makes the heart grow fonder. <laughs> and it also makes the eye wander. Oh, yes. Especially a lady's eye. Easy, boy, easy. Oh, <laughs> very pretty lady. Why you not marry her? Well, a woman has to be something besides pretty for me to go that far. Oh, wait. Someday you come across woman who is something beside pretty. Then, then what? Ah, then what indeed, my friend. Uh, uh, hold any messages that come for me. Oh, send message by wire. Where you go? Where I can't be reached. Uh, where that? I don't know, but I'll find it. Come on, boy. <laughs> up my mind yet. What's the name of this town? We call her Bluebell. Looking for a job? <laughs> Just a drink. Yeah, they'll give you one in there if you can pay for it. Thank you, Sheriff. <laughs> What'll it be, Hoppergrass? Uh, rye. Just give me the bottle in the glass. That'll be five dollars. Right. Uh, Must have worked up quite a thirst, stranger. <laughs> I'll get you a better brand than the bar bottle. Mm-hmm. Anything else? And this'll do. Yeah, it oughta. You're the one yeah. that belongs to that black horse outside? That's right. Nice animal. Would you care for a drink? Uh, no, thanks. But I got a piece of advice for you, stranger. I wouldn't drink any of that. Well, I already have. Why? Get along, Sue. Customer's waiting for you at the ferro. No, just a minute. There's a customer right here at the bar. I said get. See you around, mister. Now, look, I... <laughs> kind of careless, stranger. Yeah. What was in that drink? Whiskey, mister. That's all they sell. Well, look, I... I asked you a question. And I'm giving you an answer. Who are you? 
That's who I am. Remember me? Mm. Mm. Oh. Girl in the saloon. Right. You're in my place. Remember what happened? In a way. You slipped enough drugs in your drink to kill a horse. Here, can you sit up? Uh, oh, I felt better. Pretty stupid, mister. Flashing a thick roll of bills. Uh, oh, I'm gone. Sure. <laughs> No Barbary Coast trick. How come you fell for it? No excuse. I was careless. Man's always got an excuse for everything. Every one of you is handsome and clever. Been everywhere, broke a hundred hearts. You've all got the same high opinion of yourselves. Well, that's the... Ooh, Ooh my ribs. He tried to finish you off with his boots. Who did? Saul Goodfellow. Saul Good. I'll remember. Here, you need this. <laughs> My derringer. Saw me something else when he searched her. Mm. His card, his gun, will travel. I like the sound of that. Will you kill him? He took a thousand dollars from me, took my gun, my holster, and I suppose my horse went along, too. You suppose right. Will you kill him? <laughs> Would you care? I felt Saul's boot, too. You know, I have a lot to thank you for. You can thank me by letting me go with you. It's the only way I can leave this town. What's your name? Sue Tyler. Sue? You can pack whatever you want. I'll take you as far as Wickenburg. But I'm going to see Mr. Goodfellow before I leave. <laughs> came here this morning, I had a horse, a gun, and a thousand dollars. I intend to leave the same way. You saying somebody stole your money? What's his name? Saul Goodfellow. I just can't go along with that. Just tell me where I can find him. That won't be hard to do. You just called my brother a thief. I'm Jack Goodfellow. Next thing you'll be saying is that Cousin Jim there doctored your drink. Howdy. Or that maybe our Uncle Ed over there has your horse and your saddlebag. Howdy, mister. Seems to be your town. Sort of a family affair, but... Saul! Saul, come here. What? Well, I hear's making a complaint against you. That's the truth. I'll trouble you for my gun and my money. What are you talking about? That gun in your holster. Money in your pocket. Saul? Ask him why don't he just take him. That's the gun you say I took, mister? That's the gun. I'll tell you what. I'm going to take five bullets out of this here gun, see? Then I'm going to throw them away, like this. Now, I got one shell left in here. And I'm going to kill you with this one bullet if you try to take his gun. So, come on, take it. If you can, mister. Hand it over. <laughs> You'll be dead before you can draw the hammer back. That's so. 
Hey, hey, hey. Where'd you get that? Come on, you you stay back and hold two shots. Now who wants the second one? All right. I'll take my gun. My money. There's only 200. I see you each took a share. Drop your gun belt. Don't do it. He killed Sal, but we got four guns, and he's only got one bullet left in that derringer. One's better than none. We got him. When I say three, draw. One. If you say two, I'll kill you. Keep counting. I'll kill the next man who speaks. Yeah, it's true. She's going to run us down. Get her! Oh, come on. Come on, get All right. Yeah. All right. Give me those lines and get down low. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. You know, for a girl, you drive pretty well. Better head to the river. They'll be coming after you. Oh, boy. Oh. Yeah, we'll stop here. Give me your bag. I can carry my hand. <laughs> I've noticed that. <laughs> well, let me help you now. Yeah. By the time they backtrack, it'll be dark. We'll spend the night here. Can I see that Derringer a minute? Oh. Here. I'm going to take a bath in the river. Got three years of bluebell to wash out of my skin. And if you so much as look that way, I'll kill you. <laughs> You pull that trigger and you'll show four rifles our hiding place. Come on, give it to me. Come on. Thanks. Um, you have your bath and... All right. Uh, I'll try to find some supper. Mmm, rabbit smells good. Mmm. Ain't you afraid of showing smoke? No. Dry mesquite doesn't smoke. Oh. Yeah. I'd help you cook supper. I washed my clothes. They're drying. I, I got to stay in this blanket. Sit down. Any side of them when you was out catching the dinner? No. How come we spend the night here? Seems darkness might be the best time to run for Wickenburg. You know, the moon rises in an hour. It'll be almost as bright as day. So? I want them to tire their horses searching for us tonight. The hours will be fresh in the morning. We may be able to outrun them, but we sure can't outfight them with one bullet. Ain't got no other reason in mind for us staying here? No. Where do you go after Wickenburg? Back to San Francisco. Paladin. Hmm? Do you have a wife or anything? No. Take me with you. I'm pretty. I'm dressed up right, no man would be ashamed of me. I'm, I'm healthy and I'm strong. I'm no lily-handed lady that expects more than she's willing to give. I'm not asking for the center cut of your life. Go as you please and do as you please. Just say something nice to me now and then. That's all I ask. Just think about it until we get to Wicked. You're... You're something besides pretty. What does that mean? Mm. I'll tell you, Wickenburg. When a cloud bursts and fresh, clean rain falls on a grove of rich, green pine, it's mmm, so nice. And now, that same clean scent of pine is in new pine-scented Lysol. Right. Now the one and only genuine Lysol brand disinfectant comes in a new pine scent. It disinfects, deodorizes, as nothing else does. 
kills disease germs on contact. In laboratory tests, Lysol's anti-germ action kept working for seven full days. A bottle costs as little as 29 cents, and it's so easy to use. Just add new pine-scented Lysol to your suds when you clean in bathroom, kitchen, nursery, sick room. Use pine-scented Lysol because Lysol deep cleans. Make your home pine, sweet, and Lysol clean. You can still get regular Lysol, too. <laughs> How much longer? Another two hours. We ought to be in Wickenburg. What's the matter? There's somebody up ahead there. Hey, you there! Paladin, use the whip. There's no need. He isn't armed. Ooh. Hey, how about a ride to Wickenburg? What's the matter? Well, I've been rustled, or whatever you call it. Just because one of their horses had thrown a shoe, they took mine right out of the traces. Four men? Yes. How'd you know? Who are you? Peter Keystone, hide and tell buyer from New York. For who? For my father. He owns the plant. I need a gun. Is there one in your rig there? Well, that's one on your hip, isn't it? It's empty. Have you got one or ammunition? What's going on? Those four asked me the same question. Those men you saw, the one who took your horse, they're after us. They'll kill me. Kill you? A pretty girl like you... Why, Have you got a gun? There's a repeating rifle under the seat and some shells to go with it. Well, just a minute now. I didn't say... I know you didn't. See them. They don't know we have a gun. What's going on? Just stay down. And stay right here, both of you. But I... You stay with me, Mr. Keystone. Yeah, stay with her. I'm going to work my way up towards them. All right, Paladin. We got you cut off. Ain't no sense in trying to fight us with one bullet. What are we waiting for? With that Derringer, he ain't got no range. Get him! He's got a rifle! Oh, no, hold on. Come out with your hands up. Sure. Sure, but don't shoot me. Don't shoot now. That's far enough. Now, get the rest of my money and throw it on the ground. Stand back. What are you going to do to me? You go get my wagon and drive it up here and load those wounded men on it. The wagon's gone. My... What? Her and that other fellow took off in it. All right, Mr. Goodfellow, hitch one of your horses onto his rig. It's better than nothing. I want to get to Wickenburg. <laughs> No, in New York, I never saw anyone just like you. I think... Oh. Hello. Mr. Keystone? Hello. Good afternoon. <laughs> Mr., I, I didn't want to jump in that rig and run, but I was thinking of Sue here. Yeah. A gentleman always considers a lady first. The question is, what does a lady consider first? It was your fight, not his or mine. But I'm sure glad you came out all right. Well... What are you looking at me for? I ain't done nothing wrong. No, of course not. But this is Wickenburg. I promised you an answer to something here. You 
You've got some kind of lies to spread. Go ahead. Men are always lying. Sue. Well, not you, but most of them. All I have for you, Miss Tyler, is an expression of gratitude. For the third and last time in our casual relationship, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Keystone. Oh, wait a minute. Don't go, Mr. Paladin. Let him go. He pretended to be such a gentleman. He was just a, a gunfighter, like I told you. I hardly know him. I, I saw through him right from the first. That's odd. Just now I have a feeling he's looking right through you. Well, look. Don't let him change our plans. You promised to take me to New York with you. Where are you going? Maybe we better talk some more about New York. Later. Well, what now, Paladin? You're very pretty, Miss Tyler. Goodbye. Mr. Paladin, welcome back to San Francisco. Thank you, hey boy. I think maybe you've gone a long time. You've not gone so long at all. No. Uh, tell me, did I get any messages? Oh, yes. So all kinds of messages. But any particular messages from a particular lady? Oh, you mean pretty lady with blonde hair who wants to marry you fast? Yes. <laughs> you want? No, of course I want. Where is it? Oh, no sensible. You run away from her. You run back to her. You run away again if I give you a message. Not a chance. Now, give me the message. Never mind. I'll give it to him myself. <laughs> there. Satisfied? I don't know. Answer two questions first. Why did you go away? Because of you. Why did you come back? Because of you. You're a liar. Because of you. Um... Dinner? Hmm? I'll be ready at seven. Hmm? Call for me then? <laughs> Aye, very, very pretty. Yes, very pretty. And that's enough for now. Gun will travel. Created by Herb Meadow and Sam Rolfe, is produced and directed by Norman McDonnell and stars John Daner as Paladin with Ben Wright as Hayboy. Tonight's story was written by Gene Roddenberry and adapted for radio by John Dawson. Featured in the cast were Lynn Allen, Jack Edwards, Vic Perrin, Harry Bartell, Frank Gerstle, and Eve McVeigh. Hugh Douglas speaking. Join us again next week for Have Gun, Will Travel. This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com, and we hope you enjoyed.
please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Join in the conversation by going to otrwesterns.com slash Discord. And don't forget to send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. This episode is copyright under the attribution, not commercial, share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day, and again, thanks for listening.